Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with a quick Maya tutorial on controlling different attributes with audio inputs. So, some of you will be familiar with MASH. I'm technically using MASH here for this tutorial, but I'm only using sort of an element of it. So, your version of Maya will at least have to have MASH in it, which I think has been in since 2016. So, the first thing we're going to do is we'll grab some audio. I've got a broken down drum kit uh, loop, so if you're using just one audio input, you won't be able to break it down as much as what I'm doing here, but you'll still be able to use these techniques to control some of your inputs. So to start with, we're going to do file import, and we're going to grab this kick drum in, uh, loop, and you'll see it in the timeline here. However, I'm going to go to its options, and I'm just going to offset it by one. This will allow it to start at the beginning of my timeline, which is frame one in this case. And I know that it loops nicely if I set it to uh, 53 frames. Um, and this will be specific to the tempo of the music that you're work working with. A lot of the time, frames, uh, frame rates don't line up very well with music unless it's sort of like at a... Uh, tempo that's divisible by 24 because oftentimes we're animating at 24 frames per second but you can sort of see that about that's about right it's probably like a maybe a tenth of a frame out or so um, but a pretty good loop so we've got audio in the scene um, now let's connect it up to um, a primitive to start with for our first example so we'll bring in a polygon and I'll just focus in on that. I'm going to hold, uh, press W and then hold down D and V and just snap it to the bottom corner there. And now I can hold down, click that middle uh, of the gizmo and, uh, gizmo and hold down X and I can snap it to the grid like so. And having the gizmo at the bottom uh, will allow us to transform up and downwards from the bottom of the cube. And this is going to be important for the way that we interact with this. So we're going to jump into the uh, node editor and we will bring that cube in. We want the uh, cube shape node. So we can just get rid of those using the minus. Make sure you don't click delete, otherwise it will de actually delete those nodes. And now we need to create a mash node. And this is just a mash audio. And we will rename this to mash underscore kick for the kick drum we will open up our kick drum file again and the reason we have to do this twice is because you won't be able to hear this so if you're trying to line things up with an animation it won't work however we will also have to offset it again in the time um, and with this mash kick we can set the volume to affect the scale on the y direction so now when we play you'll see that you get a tiny little bit of deformation there. I'll smooth this out and then also what I'll do is I'll increase this using a uh, MALT uh, double linear. I'm using the double linear node rather than just a regular multiply divide because this is, for starters, a little bit easier to see because you just input one, multiply by input two. Um, but if you use something like a MALT divide, when you're using lights, it may not translate into the scene as well. Um, in your renders, it should be fine. However, uh, if you're trying to look at it in the viewport, it won't work as well. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit later when we add some lights in. So I'm just going to multiply this by 100. And then you'll see as we get to the peaks of the kick drum, we'll get um, a little bit more transformation. And then you can increase this as much as you want. So I might triple that to make it get quite a lot a bit larger on the Y and that is fine so that's transformations you can also do that natively in mesh if you're just using mesh network um, personally I try to avoid using mesh I'm not a big fan of it but it is useful in some circumstances for this sort of thing I would normally use Houdini but I know there's a lot of Maya users on the channel so um, this is good for you guys so we'll clean that up and I'm going to use a Maya light now um, I'm just using a Maya light because it doesn't really matter what renderer you're using so if you're using redshift or render man or octane or whatever um, this will still apply to you but i'm just going to add in a area light and we'll add in another audio source so we're just going to go file import again and we will add in the hi-hat 
and then we'll go to our hi-hat and we'll offset again by one so we're making sure that everything has got the same offset and we'll do the same thing when we add in the mesh audio node so we're going to load that into our outliner you can just middle mouse drag it into the uh, node editor and you'll be able to see it there and we're going to use the light shape and control it with again mesh audio and we will load our hi-hat again into the mesh audio and offset it by one then we can just run the volume into the intensity and we can view this in the viewport if we turn our light on um, and play so you'll see there there's a, it's a little bit dim at the moment so again we'll use a malt double linear and we'll multiply that by say 100 again and I'm just going to look at the hi-hat so we can see where the hits are happening so you can see as the hat engages we get these flashes on the top and we can combine the two so you can hear it and see it now finally I'll show you a quick method of controlling textures so we'll just add in this ground plane here and we'll assign a material to it turn off that grid um, we'll just need to grab a Lambert and this is going to be Lambert 2 so we'll select that grid and assign material to it we'll go back to our outliner and we'll bring in the snare now so we'll go file import again and finally bring in the snare do the same thing with our sound also if you want to access these in the outliner you can do so if you um, set it to um, DAG objects only off and then you'll be able to find your um, audio input there so you can see I can quickly get between them that way and we'll offset that by one make sure we rename that one there that was the hi-hat and then we're going to bring in a mesh audio again and same thing we'll rename that to snare load it in and offset it by one so now when we have the playback with everything enabled you can hear it all um, but we need to be able to see this plane so I'm going to actually add in another light here just so we can see it I'll just use a ambient light for this and I'll just set the intensity to point, point 0.5 now we'll grab our Lambert 2 and we'll just create a fractal texture hitting tab to bring that in and typing it in just run that into the color input and then if we turn on our uh, material texture you can see it in the scene now so now we will control that texture with our mash node so we'll just grab that and drag it in and we will also grab the Lambert 2 and drag that in let's hold down uh, shift click both of those and map them out so we can see both inputs and outputs and I want to work with the uh, fractal so what we're going to be doing again is using just the out volume and we can control any of these parameters here that has an input um, the color gain or we could use it into the frequency min and max or ratio I'm going to use ratio because it kind of gives it a nice blurring effect so we'll run the out volume into the uh, ratio but we'll probably find that our ratio doesn't get very exciting let's have a look at the snare input yeah it only gets up to 0 0.005 so we probably want to again malt double linear input one and then we'll make this a thousand so that should be five so then we can stick it onto all track sound 
play it back. And that's just a very simple overview of some of the things you can do um, with the mesh input node uh, to control a few different variety of things. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.